My biggest regret is my children having to suffer the anguish of seeing their daddy in and out of hospitals and struggling to regain his health. A battle-weary hero who says he came closest to death thanks to a doctor's prescription. I missed some of the best years of my kid's life. I can't get that back. A tormented whistleblower who feels she's trying to make up for past sins. I took this job thinking that I was going to be helping people, and I was killing people. A small town attorney on a crusade against Big Pharma. I do not know how they look in a mirror, and I do not know how they put their head on a pillow at night. All united against a common cause to hold one company and its executives responsible for what they say is their role in the opioid crisis. Charged in Boston federal court. His former company accused of bribing doctors to prescribe an opioid. Mr. Kapoor, ABC News, do you have any comments on the allegation being made on the case? John Kapoor, the rags to riches billionaire founder of Insys Therapeutics, along with former executives. Mr. Babich, any comment? Stand accused of an elaborate scheme. A criminal indictment and hundreds of lawsuits accuse them of coaxing doctors with money and sexual favors to prescribe subsis, a fentanyl spray for severe cancer pain, to thousands who didn't need it. Their now former company told ABC News it in no way defends the past misconduct of former employees and is fully cooperating with the government. Any comment? Then prosecutors say INSYS put profits over people, defrauding insurance companies to have them pay for it all. And which medication are you calling about? It's sepsis, SUV as a boy, SYS. Prescription drugs like sepsis are responsible for more than a third of opioid deaths, yet no pharmaceutical executive has ever been convicted in a criminal case. Prosecutors now hoping to change that using federal racketeering charges, usually reserved for mobsters. The potential toll from this drug, breathtaking. More than 7,000 deaths have been reported of people who were taking subsis, according to the FDA Adverse Events Reporting System. People who didn't have cancer, but were prescribed the drug anyway. Makes you wonder why they're not charged with homicide. Jeffrey Bulkalter never imagined he would end up in a shelter like this for homeless veterans. When we first met him last year, he told us about his three tours of duty in Iraq, where he says he was hit by multiple IED blasts. He had a broken back. The vertebrae had slipped off each other, and the back was actually in jeopardy of sliding off and causing paralysis, if not worse. Despite his injuries, Jeff flourished, settling in Maryland, where he started a family. What did it mean to you to be dad? Everything. It's the strength that you need when you don't feel like there's anything else that can give you the motivation to be the, the better version of yourself. But there were still moments when the pain was unbearable. Give me a laundry list of the painkillers you've been on. I don't think there's one I haven't been on. Percocet. Percocet, oxycodone. And were you ever addicted to any of those? I would say that I was taking more than I ever should have. You know, it could be an injury. It could just be a simple fall or sleeping wrong where my back would flare up and it would be, I mean, at that point, a 10 out of 10. It would be ungodly. It couldn't move. And when that would happen, I'd always have to go to the emergency room to get treated. Then in 2010, he thought he found a better approach when he was introduced to a new doctor, William Tam, a pain specialist in Annapolis, Maryland. This initially had come out with him saying there's this new medication that I think will keep you out of the emergency room. That medication, Subsys, a fentanyl spray 50 times more powerful than heroin. Squeeze your fingers and thumb together to spray Subsys under your tongue. Subsys was FDA approved specifically for severe cancer pain. But Jeff, and thousands like him, was prescribed the drug off-label, a legal and common practice for many drugs, but tightly regulated for powerful opiates. This is a, approved for one reason only, and that's breakthrough cancer pain. It didn't matter that Jeff didn't have cancer pain, says a former INSYS employee. Could you estimate what percent of the patients you prior authorized actually had cancer? I would say, from, from my personal experience, around 10 percent. What mattered was that the patient was insured so that employees like Patty Nixon could make sure subsis prescriptions were paid for. They were asking me to lie to insurance companies about patients having cancer and break their cancer pain. You know, a lot of it was word games. Um, you know, when the insurance company would ask the question, does the patient have cancer with breakthrough cancer pain? And when we would respond, we would say, yes, we're treating the breakthrough pain. 
Prosecutors allege that insurance fraud was just one part of the scheme. Dissatisfied with sales after only three months on the market, Insys began a speakers program, supposedly to increase brand awareness. These programs are legal and common to teach doctors about new drugs, but prosecutors argue that INSYS conceived theirs as a front for bribes, pointing to exchanges like this. One of the things that they do is they identify medical providers, physicians, that are high prescribers of opioids in general, pain management doctors. Dr. Tam, the pain specialist who treated Jeff, was allegedly part of the speaker series. Government records show that he received at least $55,000 from INSYS between 2013 and 2016. They were setting up sham speaking events. It was just a means to have a fancy dinner and act like that they were putting on an educational event that was legitimate. And in exchange, what happened to substance prescriptions? They skyrocketed. They would also treat doctors to lavish meals, often accompanied by sales reps, like Amanda Corey Emoff. I didn't have a strong connection with really anyone. A former reality show participant and Playboy model. Evidence shows Insys routinely employed sex appeal to drive prescriptions. I have never seen such in-your-face, such egregious, blatant behavior. Hiring drug reps that had no industry experience whatsoever, strippers, just People that didn't have college degrees, had no understanding of the FDA and regulations. Socializing with doctors was a corporate strategy. Company emails show then Vice President of Sales pressuring his staff in one of his many directives. And the strategy paid off. Between 2012 and 2013, the company saw more than a thousand percent growth in net revenue of subsist sales, making it the darling of Wall Street. Execs all smiles as they open the NASDAQ exchange. The following year, Subsys became the most widely prescribed drug of its type. By then, Kapoor, the soft-spoken immigrant, had become a billionaire. A few years later, he joined the Forbes list of richest people in America. All the while, hailing his drug as a win for patients and shareholders alike. That product that we launched three years ago, today, this year, will do close to $300 million. These are Insys sales reps, rapping about their conquests, showcased at a national sales meeting in 2015. Under the fentanyl costume, the VP of sales. Whoa! Meanwhile, Jeff says he was edging closer and closer to death. The come to Jesus moment was probably when I was in the ER. The nurses were scared to death to give me those doses. The dosage was so off the charts. So off the charts. My understanding is at, you were taking the equivalent of 5,000 Percocet a day. Yes, and, or they say equivalent to a gram of heroin. A day. A day. Jeff has filed a lawsuit against Dr. Tam, Kapoor, and Insys. The company denied that there were more than 7,000 deaths associated with the use of subsys and stated 951 cases of patients who passed away while on or having been suspected to have been on subsys, and that attempting to link the death of cancer patients to their use of subsys is both inaccurate and misleading. John Kapoor has pled not guilty. Dr. Tam denies any wrongdoing. In response to the allegations made by Jeff, both Kapoor and Dr. Tam's attorneys told ABC News they have no comment. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. That near-death hospital visit was the breaking point, Jeff says. He spent years working to get clean. Miss you guys. He's escaped the grips of fentanyl, but lost so much else he held dear. Why I survived, you know, when I shouldn't have... I owe it to myself, to my family, and all those who didn't, to get my story out and to get back to the top of the mountain. When we come back, the moment a whistleblower says she came clean. You were getting anxiety attacks? Horrible anxiety attacks. Why? I knew what I was doing was wrong. Hear the evidence for yourself. If they did not make that call, she would have never been approved for the drug. Stay with us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.